Hello all and welcome to episode 7 of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be chatting about foods to avoid on a low-carb diet. So it's quite an exciting topic. How are you, Eric? Doing well. How are you, Glenn? Fantastic. Good to speak to you and good to have you on again. Um, first question I've got for you uh, or I wanted to chat with you about is you are famous for your page four. You are uh, for people that know, everyone knows you as page, you know, that, that you came up with page four. And for people that maybe don't know, it is a, an absolutely infamous food list that you've come up with over the years um, of foods that people could actually have uh, and be sure to stay under 20 grams of total carbs per day. So the first thing is, the first question I've got for you is, how did you come up with this list? <laughs> right. Well, page four you know, literally is the fourth page of the handout we've used at Duke for 20 years now. We, it started in the research setting, and I borrowed page four, the list of foods, from Dr. Atkins and Jackie Eberstein, who actually had used it for 30 years. So uh, my story, I got into this because two of my patients did the Atkins diet, had great success, but we were worried about the safety of it. So Dr. Yancey and I at Duke contacted Dr. Atkins and we learned what they were doing and we didn't just start doing it, we studied it. So we borrowed a, a list of foods that had been used for 30 years. I mean, they, they worked on it and uh, we said, well, let's study what you have learned to do. And because the studies look so good uh, and now they've been done all over the world, uh, we continue to use that list of foods, which has turned into page four because it was the fourth page of the Duke handout. Uh, but um, so that's the simple way of teaching what to do here. Just follow this. It, so if it's not on page four, you can't have it. And uh, for those who really want it to work and they'll follow the, the guidance, um, it, it's really effective. So um, before we get into the foods to avoid, um, I know that one of the hallmarks of a keto or low carb type of diet is the fact that you don't starve yourself. And, and on your list, um, you've got some of those foods that are actually in, you can have them in unlimited amounts and unlimited quantities. Um, what are they? What are those? Just give us a couple of, just, just, a, just a few of them before we get on to the foods to avoid. Well, this type of diet program for weight loss is unique in that the hunger goes away. So the hunger should go away in a day or two if you're doing it correctly. And on the list of foods, I do say you can have an unlimited amount, but, but really people eat less automatically. I mean, you can thwart it. Uh, someone you know, once came in and said, you know, doc, I, I had three pounds of bacon every day because you said I could eat as much as I wanted. Well, the thrill of that wears off after just a few days. But you can have an unlimited amount of the meat, poultry, fish and shellfish and eggs because they have no carbs. They don't raise the blood glucose. And because it doesn't raise the blood glucose, it doesn't raise the blood insulin. And the blood insulin is the fattening hormone. So that's why you can have the meat like burgers without the bun and bacon and all sorts of meats because they don't raise the blood sugar, don't raise the insulin. Uh, and that is surprising to a lot of people because they've been taught the other way of doing it, which is low fat. And a lot of these foods you are supposed to limit on a low fat, low calorie type of diet. But just to go over that limitation thing again, it's self-limited so that I can tell people you don't have to limit it, but they do it automatically. And um, at first, it, um, is that saying something that is not correct or, or, or a little misleading? No, it's not misleading because you can't, it, it, psychologically, there is no external restriction on what you can eat. And that's huge. Because if someone has been in a calorie restricted type of program, and that's the only thing they know, they're always trying to wonder if they can get more and get more. But on a keto low carb diet, the hunger goes away from within and you're satisfied with less. And they don't have that psychological, oh, but I have to. So you can always eat something on a low carb keto diet, which is again, a different 
kind of way of doing things than the traditional which is, approach. which is absolutely huge because i mean most people like you said um you know when you tell someone that you cannot have this and you cannot have that and you cannot you gotta you gotta starve yourself um you you kind of you, you kind of feel yourself thinking about it all day long and uh, it's, of course. it's almost impossible so this yeah. way um when there's when there's food lists that are unlimited it kind of gives someone that comfort that um, they're not going to starve. Yeah. So um, onto the list of foods that we shouldn't be having on the, the you know, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you for three different um, food groups, let's say, so to speak. Now, one of them is actually um, that I would probably, uh, I'm going to ask you if you think this is high up on your list is, um, is fruit juice. Now, you know, for so many years when, when I was, you know, doing my sport and, and um, being very, very involved in, in, um, in, in, in being an athlete, um, I was always under the impression that drinking my daily glass, fresh glass of orange juice was healthy for me. And you often see people that are on a diet program, they're trying to lose a lot of weight and they're drinking their, their fruit juices or their, their, their other types of juices. And although it's not considered technically a food, um, it's still very, very high in sugar. Would you say that fruit juice and other types of juices are one of the, one of the worst foods to eat on a low carb type of diet or? Yes. And, uh, you know, for that matter, any, any type of diet, <laughs> lots of sugar in the drinks, um, and fructose being a sugar that goes directly to the liver and Dr. Uh, Robert Lustig has talked about this for a long time about fructose being like alcohol to children. And he's even gone so far to say that it should be limited from children, the fructose. So um, he's a professor at the University of California, San Francisco. Uh, and um, so yeah, fruit juice or really any sugary drink for that matter, uh, not a good thing to have on any type of diet program, including a low carb keto program because when you want to avoid foods that raise the blood sugar, that's kind of the theme of a low carb keto diet. And if you drink a drink that raises the blood sugar, that works against the the body's ability to burn its own fat or the, the fat that you eat. So the, the common theme is don't drink or eat things with high sugar, fruit juice, uh, especially important to say because we were all taught that it was great. And uh, I'm reminded of a, a story that Dr. Lustig told about how he got into the low carb world. And it's because he was out at a, um, a migrant, I think a migrant worker um, farm and the a mother was asking why she was able to get all of this fruit juice uh, and her, her child was obese. And um, why would the government let her buy this if it was unhealthy? And you know, the, the bells went off in the doctor's mind that, wow, this is a major public health issue. And, and so many people think it's great. And that sugar just, you know, you either burn the sugar or you turn it into fat. And that is one of the met metabolic physiologic things that most people don't know. I I'm still get people who are surprised to learn that sugar gets turned to fat in our body, but that's how we store energy. So that makes perfect sense to me, but it, it might not make sense to you. So yeah, no fruit juice, you know, and for that matter, be really careful with fruit. You know, the fruit is changed so that it's almost, uh, 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 there's less fiber and less of the healthy stuff in it, but um, fruit juice being the, the processed form of it doesn't give you the other sorts of fiber. And, and um, so yeah, fruit juice, yeah, one of the thing. worst. The other thing is that what, what people um, tend to lose sight of is if you've got a, a, a full glass of, of, of fruit juice, it's typically not one fruit that they've had to put in there. It's probably three or four type of fruits that they put in there. Not only that, they've used a blender to, to, to break open the fiber and actually release all the sugar. So it's almost like a triple whammy. You know, you, you're eating three times the amount of fruit that you would normally typically eat if you had just one fruit. And then and number two, it, it denatures the, the, the fiber and it releases all the sugar. So it's kind of like a, and that's why um, I thought that would probably be um, listed as, as one of the biggest ones on the list. 
what would you what would you say is number two um, as as well free food in, to avoid? Yeah, in in my area or you know, the U.S., um, uh, it's the the starches that have worked their way into the diet, the bread, pasta, bread, pasta uh, things like tortillas and and uh, the spaghetti and linguine. I mean, so the processed starches. Um, I, I'll joke uh, in my class sometimes with the right group that um, you know, have you ever seen a bread tree? Or, or a pasta bush and you know people think it's a crude attempt at a joke to just point out that these are processed foods there is no such thing as a bread tree right it's a processed sort of thing um, but because people have had it they think it's normal and uh, so but these starches get digested to sugar so all you need to do is check your blood sugar an hour after eating bread and pasta and your blood sugar goes up Blood sugar going up causes the insulin to go up. Insulin is the fattening hormone. Um, so uh, the bread in any form, I mean, people will say, what about whole grain bread? Yeah, no, that's still bread. And, and there are substitutions that, that aren't quite low enough in carbs. That's why we teach the total carb method of, of following these um, other products. And, um, uh, but you can make your own bread substitutes uh, and uh, there are some interesting products coming out that are mimicking tortilla made out of cheese and made out of egg whites uh, and cauliflower. And so, you know, it's interesting to see that the, uh, yes, these are processed foods, but they're much lower in carbs. Uh, well, I guess you might say the, um, if it's just Parmesan cheese, which is the wrap uh, that, you know, it's not, uh, doesn't have the starches and all. So that gets into the convenience foods might be low carb and keto friendly uh, but uh, and then pasta there are some substitutes you could always do the zucchini noodles known as zoodles spaghetti squash and then there are the shirataki noodles which are a kind of a, a root that is not very starchy that's made into the noodles uh, so you can have the feel of pasta and those are available just about everywhere in the U.S., these pasta substitutes, um, uh, but you know the, uh, the downfall, or you know downfall, <laughs> people will just gravitate back toward these foods um, if they get around the rest of their family. For example, at, at the holiday season, and there's the other family members are still eating those foods. Um, and then uh, the good news is you just start over. You, you stop eating these foods after a day or two. The craving is gone, you know, but the, the starches, the, the bread, tortilla, the um, pasta, these processed starches, just uh, best to avoid them. And uh, so that was, uh, we've spoken about the fruit juices, first food group, um, pasta, rice, um, uh, as the second food group, third food group uh, that you would avoid. What would that be, the last one? Well, you know, again, it's a thing that I, I see misunderstood. Um, I would say corn. Corn and its uh, byproducts, the corn syrup. Uh, and um, uh, so uh, there will be times of the year when my patients will, but everyone's having, you know, corn on the cob and, or other, um, or, or corn might work its way into some sort of dish. Uh, it's very starchy. Uh, so f as far as something that a high ticket item to avoid, that would be, uh, uh, I guess, so the, the corn and potatoes, I didn't say potatoes yet. I kind of put them in the same uh, category because they're just so starchy and then they can be made into so many different things. You know, uh, someone might come back saying, well, you didn't tell me I couldn't have French fries. Right. And even though I told them no potatoes, uh, so you, should, you really shouldn't have French fries. Um, the, the um, other good news, though, is there are substitutes coming out for different types of, like, tortilla. Instead of corn tortillas, you have the, these newer type of tortillas, the, the potato substitutes, um, mashed cauliflower. Uh, there are even um, cauli tots that are available where, you know, yes, it's processed food, but so many people want that convenience factor. They're frozen 
Kali tots, and it takes you a moment. Are those tater tots? Tater, the name came from potato. I never really thought that through, but so they're not tater tots, they're Kali tots because they're made out of cauliflower. Uh, so, uh, but it's really great to see the industry in the US coming around to making these lower carb uh, substitutes for what so many people grew up with. Um, and, you know, just because we grew up with it doesn't mean that it was healthy. And, and, you know, what we went through in our generation is just kind of bizarre in terms of food, you know, getting uh, the, the marketing on TV for sugary cereals and, and um, uh, well, maybe that should be on the list. That's the next talk. <laughs> right. Don't have cereal. Uh, yeah, cereal is a huge one. Um, maybe we need to make it the four biggest food groups that um, one should avoid, cereals. Um, I want to come back. I want to visit, before I move on to another question, I want to move, I want to just go back and revisit the fruit. So something that is, um, that struck me when I went to your practice, uh, you've got your two consulting rooms and you've got a little um, uh, poster there and it says, fruit is nature's candy. Um, and obviously, again, um, not only did we grow up thinking that fruit juice was so good for us, but we also used to think that fruit is extremely healthy and it's wonderful for us. And while I probably imagine that for some people it is that way, so for people with, um, that, 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 that don't have metabolic-related uh, issues, they're younger, they're very, very active, I would imagine that fruit is just fine for those type of people. But for the people that you're seeing in your clinic, fruit is nature's candy. What is your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, it um, kind of brings home the idea that um, just because it's natural, just because it's sweet, it is um, not, doesn't mean it's good for you metabolically. And you know, I think you made an important point that not everyone has to be careful about these carbs, um, and that gets misconstrued. Like um, people think I, I blame or. Um, Ascribe, think that I think carbs should be eliminated from earth. You know, I, I don't. Some people have to be very careful to avoid them. Uh, so um, fruit, um, the other thing about fruit is the, the serving size can be changed, right? A piece of fruit doesn't have to be all consumed at one time. You know, I, I was struck by um, living in other countries. Uh, I was in France in college and they would, have a, a, a thin slice of apple, for example, with cheese, rather than having the whole apple just by itself. Uh, so the um, getting the sweetness but reducing the serving size is a way to uh, to have some fruit, um, but um, avoiding it if you have a metabolic intolerance, carbohydrate intolerance, is really important. Um, and you know, the, but the if you think about the fruit, how sweet some are and some are, grapefruit is the lowest carb fruit because, you know, when you think about it, uh, it, it tasted, it's not sweet. And uh, so if you uh, think of, and in fact, some weight loss programs use grapefruit as the morning fruit, half grapefruit. I think, I don't do use that in mind, but I think it's because it didn't impact the blood sugar much. Um, but uh, as a general principle, fruit is nature's candy, meaning you want to limit how often you have it. If, you know, in some areas, um, when I was growing up, uh, basically, or the generation before me, fruit or dessert was like a once a week treat. You know, a Sunday was a, an ice cream that you had on Sunday, right? And now, uh, so every now and then having those things makes sense to me metabolically then every day having something in fruit being nature's candy, uh, you know, that's right next to the sign that says fruit makes you fat <laughs> in my office. So uh, I, yeah, I, I have to kind of say things directly to get through to some folks. Something that's, um, that it isn't so obvious, like for example, um, whey protein. Whey protein has been known to spark your insulin. So it doesn't really affect your glucose numbers, but it can spike your insulin. What are your thoughts on that? Or do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, uh, that kind of goes into the general theme of, of um, having real foods instead of 
products uh, so that if, if whey protein is in a, a food, you're going to get less uh, of it. Um, and that is a common theme when you're introducing carbs back, if you can, is you just have less of it. Uh, and so whey protein, um, you know, I, I have a lot of people who, who use it and do fine, but it's something to be aware of. Um, and uh, I'm not a big proponent of, of, you know, taking protein powders and making things like that um, just under the general principle of food um, will bring you the, my, the vitamins and minerals uh, that you need to metabolize the food if you eat real foods rather than some rarefied processed version of, of protein, for example. Thanks for this unbelievable info, uh, Doc. It's uh, always insightful and uh, we really appreciate that. I uh, have some questions. Brett asks, um, and you just answered this question, but he asks, are there any supplements that you would stay away from? Sorry, uh, you've just repeated, you might have to repeat yourself there. But are there any other supplements that you would stay away from? Yeah, you know, um, I kind of, uh, there are some practitioners and and people who kind of grow up with the idea that you need extra vitamins and supplements and that the, the diet is deficient. And I'm not convinced of that yet. I mean, I'm, I'm open to the idea. Uh, so I'm not a big supplement promoter. Uh, and uh, I think the bottom line in terms of blood glucose and insulin uh, is that you want to avoid supplements that have impact negatively on the blood glucose. So that would, you know, avoiding sugar, for example, in the substitutes or in the supplements. Uh, but um, I, you know, I'm uh, someone once um, uh, said that, you know, I'm always thinking out of the box and, and actually I, I follow data, right? So I, and just because the mainstream hasn't followed data doesn't mean I'm out of the box, out of the mainstream. I, no, we're, we create our own mainstream with new sources of data. So um, if data are, uh, come out that you need these kinds of supplements, I'll be open to that. Um, but I am not really convinced that you need to do anything other than get your food fixed, you know, getting away, taking away the junk foods, um, eating a, a, you know, a well, formulated type of low carb diet. So um, Ted asks, um, you've answered this question as well, uh, slightly, maybe you can elaborate on this one, but he asks, is there any other fruits other than berries that are also low in carbs? And I know that you mentioned the grapefruit, but are there any other fruits that are also relatively low in carbs other than berries? Yeah, you know, um, the berries really are, they're, fruits, you know, are, but they're just small, right? So the serving size is smaller. They still will have the same impact if you, um, or relatively same impact if you eat large quantities of them. Um, so no, you know, I'm watching these other uh, lower carb fruits and there, there's a lot that um, is being introduced into um, different kinds of, of nuts and fruits and the way I would look at them is how they impact the blood glucose. And the interesting thing is that there's an individual variability with the impact on someone's blood glucose. So it might affect you differently than it affects me. And so I'm, I, I guess I try to whittle away at the idea that you have to have that, always trying to get back to what you had and be satisfied with, with a new set of foods um, that may not have all that uh, same sweetness and sugar that cause the negative metabolic impacts. Seems like every one of these questions are merging into the next one because Amanda asks, uh, she says she's an athlete and surely she can have some foods that are higher in carbs. We've just mentioned that obviously certain people are affected differently. So she is an athlete, um, as are many people that may be watching this episode. Um, can they have foods that are higher in carbs? Yes, I think so. Uh, you know, the um, experience of folks uh, that I've seen is that you don't have to eat carbs. Uh, and that, you know, was um, actually a recent paper that 
I was an author on a young doctor, Justin Taunt, re looked at the information on whether you have to eat carbohydrates, whether carbohydrate is an essential nutrient, and it turns out that it's not. Um, so you can exercise and, and run on fats for your fuel. That's the, the whole serial killers, movie serial killers too. Uh, but if you want to introduce carbs, you can. And it really is kind of trial and error. Uh, some people feel better when they're eating more carbs when they're exercising. I think that was your experience, Glenn. And I think that's fine. Um, so uh, the relative amount will, again, depend on uh, what you're trying to accomplish. If, if your performance is better, you feel better at a certain carb level, then, you know, um, and you're not, you know, having 300 grams of carbs. I and mean, I don't know that anyone would say that's a great thing. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, I think it is okay. I, I would push toward carbs that are in real foods. And in that case, berries and, um, and fruits are, will be into that uh, area. The more starchy vegetables would be something to consider as something to introduce, but stay away from the, you know, processed middle of the grocery store or Doritos, Cheetos, you know, all those, not to call out any specific brand, but um, certainly you can eat more carbs. The more, the more active you are, the, the younger you are, uh, are the, the general principles. Eric, as always, thank you so, so much. If you enjoyed this video um, and would like to see future videos, please will you follow us on our different channels. We are on our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name of Adapt Your Life. And if you are subscribed at our uh, YouTube channel, please hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted for future videos. Um, and if you found that the video was helpful anyway, please would you share or like the video. It would really mean the world to us. Um, next week, we will be discussing hunger on a low-carb diet. So join us next Wednesday for um, that topic. Um, on behalf of Dr. Westman, this is us signing out of Conversations with Dr. Westman until next week. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you.